I, I just knew that when I was a kid, I just loved playing with my dinosaur toys. Erin Fitzgerald is fascinated by dinosaurs. If it's the few things that I remember uh, of being in grade school, it was any art project that came up at some point had uh, dinosaurs involved in it. I made a marine environment one, and then I made a land environment one, and, uh, and my teacher was so impressed by that. She made me walk around the school and show all the kids <laughs> my diorama. She turned her childhood passion into a career, working as a preparator, or preparer of fossils, in Paul Serino's paleontology lab at the University of Chicago. I came to the University of Chicago to learn some molding and casting techniques. And, um, and then Paul at the time was looking for a preparator and he had heard that I, I was learning very quickly what I was working on and I had been previously preparing for uh, seven years at the time. Aaron studies ancient human and prehistoric dinosaur bones, piecing history together. We are trying to figure out the hands and the feet and what size are which and what pieces go where. Uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult than others when pieces aren't uh, quite uh, articulated the way that they, we would like them to be or piece, parts of them are missing and we have to try to identify uh, characteristics about it to figure out what bones they are. Uh, and that might take anywhere from you know, maybe a few hours to a few weeks. Trained as an artist and a past volunteer at the Field Museum, Erin is able to see beyond the bones and imagine what the dinosaur looked like in real life. She uses her artistic talents to bring dinosaurs to life through molds and casts. You end up finding people like Erin and the others that work here um, that in many cases have a Hollywood background or have the ability and the interest not just to clean bones, not just to glue things together, um, but have the interest in going further and putting the flesh back on the bone. Visually representing what dinosaurs look like is no easy task. So that you look like that. Yeah. Uh, it also does come down to um, the risk of, of the bones breaking and are we doing more risk by removing things and taking things apart. Uh, molding and casting is also a very risky process for the bone itself anyhow. Erin doesn't seem to mind risk in the lab or outside it. She travels with Sereno to different corners of the world. In, in the case of Erin, she, in addition, wants to go out in the field. So she's been in the middle of Sahara. This is thrilling for her. And since I had never been to Niger before and didn't quite know what to expect, I was always told, like, well, if you go to Niger, just be aware of that so that you understand what you're getting yourself into. And it's like, oh, how bad could that really be? And um, I was told that there's these things out there called solifuge, a solifuge. It's like this half scorpion, spider, ant looking thing, and apparently they get really big. And apparently they run and they chase after you, and apparently they bite. And I was just horrified. From the risk of solifuges at night, to trekking through mud while carrying heavy gear, to finding dead mice in their camp's water source, Erin makes Indiana Jones look timid. But for her, these risky adventures aren't just for thrills. It's for scientific discovery and her lifelong adoration of the dinosaurs.